Jacinda Ardern, Prime Minister of New Zealand, she has been the poster child of the left for a couple of years now. But what she is doing to New Zealand actually amazes me. In fact, it scares me. And be warned, this is where woke politics is taking us all to a form of apartheid. The Maori population of New Zealand is about 16%, and that includes people who also have European ancestry, some of them, 16%. But Ardern's cabinet commissioned a report which sets out a 20-year plan to have New Zealand eventually ruled 50-50, on race grounds, Maori and non-Maori. And Adern has already now created a new Maori health authority. That's the first step to a divided health system, divided by race. One system for one, another system for everyone else. Joining me is Dr. Muriel Newman, a former business representative, a former politician, right of centre, and now head of the think tank, the New Zealand Centre for Political Research. Dr. Newman, thank you so much for your time. Can you tell us, please, about this plan? Because the amazing thing to me is that there has been so little debate in New Zealand about what seems to me a very clear, clear plan for apartheid in your country. Well, you're right, Andrew. It was introduced under the United Nations Declaration of Indigenous Peoples. So it was a plan to implement that international um, agenda, if you like, and what came out of it was in fact Hipurpur, which is a plan for tribal control by 2040, which is the anniversary, the 200 year anniversary of the treaty, signing of the Treaty of Waitangi. And that report was produced in 2019, but the government kept it secret, even from their coalition partner, New Zealand First, for the whole of uh, 2020. And then the election came along and they kept it secret then. And now that they have total power, total control, uh, they are implementing it at speed. And it is extremely frightening because most Kiwis have no idea what's going on. They see changes happening every day and wonder what on earth is driving it. And unfortunately, we're in a situation where the government has spent $55 million dollars on a public interest broadcasting fund, which is something that the media can uh, apply for to get grants. And one of the conditions of doing that is that they have to, um, if you like, speak out in favor of this treaty partnership agenda, which is the reason uh, that the uh, Maori sovereignty movement is giving for wanting to take 50% of control of New Zealand. Wow, you've raised so many things I need to flesh out here that really disturb me. First of all, now, you know, correct me, because I'm not from New Zealand and I didn't sit, you know, learning New Zealand history at school, but you say this is to mark the anniversary of the Treaty of Waitangi. As I understand it, the Treaty of Waitangi was Maori tribes who had been decimating each other in war coming together to say to the British, we accept British sovereignty, which ultimately then transforms New Zealand sovereignty under the British crown. We accept British sovereignty. And now to mark the anniversary, you're going to undo all that by having 50-50 after all. I mean, this doesn't make sense. No, it, it doesn't make sense for Kiwis either. The reality is that the treaty brought equality, equal rights for all New Zealanders, and that is the way this country has developed. There's been a strong movement, I guess, from sovereignty activists that sort of arose in the 80s, but somehow over recent years, they've managed to march into many institutions in New Zealand and take over positions of some power. Uh, they've marched now into government. And as I said, that because the Labour Party doesn't need a coalition partner anymore under our MMP uh, electoral system, it means that the Maori caucus actually have a lot of control over cabinet. And we are quite afraid really that they are being given their head. They're not being reined in by Jacinda Ardern. And so we've got this headlong rush to Maori control. You mentioned the Maori 
health system or the Maori Health Authority, which will end up with the right of veto over the whole health system. Uh, we've got at the moment, we're fighting a battle against three waters uh, where the government's got this plan to centralise control of all water services. That's wastewater, stormwater and freshwater. In New Zealand, take it away from councils and centralise it in four authorities and they'll be half controlled by local iwi. And of course, that'll give them essentially the right of veto over water in New Zealand. And all this is going on without an open debate. It's going on secretly. I mean, we're sort of picking up on it, but you know, we're small voices trying to warn the country that this is underway and they should, be, number one, be aware of it. And if they don't like it, they should damn well speak out about it. Well, that's what, yeah, I simply don't understand why there's not a debate. Even if you were a journalist who loved all this, you know, 50-50, go out there and talk about how good it is, you look up, uh, you know, the, for, for, for stories about this, I find almost nothing. And I wonder, you know, you mentioned uh, you've got this public interest journalism fund that in a small country is offering $55 million of public money as long as you don't rock the boat. Uh, too much to, to you know, the media outlets. You've also got your uh, TVNZ, your your ABC. It strikes me that this is our future, where no one dares say boo to a goose. The government is controlling debate. I mean, it's just absolutely shocking. Well, Muriel and Newman, all, all strength to you for at least daring to speak out. I'm sure you get your uh, share of abuse, but I'm grateful to you for your courage. Thank you so much for your time.